to Senator Daphne Campbell, District 38, Health Carol Town Hall meeting. I'm going to introduce a very special person. She's a graduate from, of Florida International University with both a bachelor's and a master's degree. She's also a graduate of University of Miami School of Law with a Juris Doctorate degree. She worked as a law clerk, legal intern, a nurse, and many other areas of healthcare. She has served in the community as a member of the FENPAC Board of Trustees, where she participated in the endorsement of Florida elected officials and candidates running for office. Participated in bylaw amendments and conference hearings during an ANN that convention and even shook the hands of the most powerful man in the world at that time, President Barack Obama. She also served as Vice Chair of Toastmaster International, a nonprofit organization. Everyone come this way. In 2010, she traveled to Haiti to, she traveled to Haiti to assist in the earthquake relief effort. She previously served as chairperson of the Florida House of Representatives District 108 Health Task Force. In 2010, she was honored with a proclamation by the Miami-Dade County Office of the Mayor and Board of County Commissioners. She is the Chief Executive Officer of Health Management Ventures, Inc., and self-published book author of Hire. She is the first Jamaican-American woman to chair the Health Task Force in both legislative chambers from Miami, South Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Jennifer Leslie. Hello, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready for an exciting evening? Yes. Are you ready for an exciting program? Yes. So let's get started. Honorable State. Senator Daphne Campbell, dignitaries, Senate District 38, Citizen Advisory President and Board Members, Senate District 38, Health Task Force Members, all constituents of District 38, and all members of the audience here tonight, Good evening. Good evening. We're all gathered here tonight for one reason and one reason only, and that is for your dear, honorable Senator Daphne Campbell. We're here together for a special health care town hall meeting which has been organized by your senator. Let's start with Betty Charles. Good afternoon, my name is Betty Charles and I'm a healthcare lawyer. I practice in Broward County and I'm the co-chair of the Legislative Committee on the Healthcare Task Force. Hello. Next, Mr. George Basu. Thank you. Uh, my name is George Basu. I'm the executive director and founder of Word in Action. This is an organization that deals uh, with prevention and treatment of children that have been sexually abused. I am the co-chair of the Health Task Force. Thank you. Next, Dr. Alejandro Arrieta. Hello, my name is Alejandro Arrieta. I work at Florida International University. I, I work as a professor there. And I'm a, a, an economist, a health economist. Next, Marjorie Paul. Audrey Paul, I'm a nurse practitioner. I am the one of the vice chair of the Senate um, District 38 Health Task Force. 
and I'm also um, a member of the Haitian American Nurses Association, so I'm here to serve. We'll next hear from Dr. Catherine Tikam. Dr. Catherine Tekim, I'm a nurse practitioner. I am the co chair for the Health Task Force. Thank you. Next, Ms. Shola Tella. My name is Shola Tella. I'm a pharmacist by profession and I own an independent pharmacy. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mikel Titus. I am a public health professional. I am the executive director of the Community Health and Empowerment Network. I also work with Senator Campbell on the District 38 Health Task Force as an honorary member. Now, just look at what Senator Daphne Campbell has put together, folks. Look at what she has put together. And do you want to hear more? We have more on this side. So let's start on the right with Dr. Pierre Paul Cadet. I'm actually the assistant, I mean, adjunct professor at the university. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I'm a medical director of the not too far from you, well, Max Health Center on 125th, and also I'm a medical director of an office of uh, Polyclinic de West Palm Beach in West Palm Beach and Delray Beach, the past president of the Haitian Medical Association abroad, IMHU, and I'm currently also an ambassador of the Faculty of Medicine and Pharmacy in Haiti, and also adjunct professor at the USAT, University of uh, Science Te and Technology. Okay, I'm also responsible for the foreign, you know, relations for Dr. For that, Daphne, that means I am responsible for all the, as a liaison between Haiti and Senator Campbell and also Jamaica everywhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, Yinka Obajimi. Good afternoon. My name is Yinka Obajimi Apolari. I'm a nurse practitioner, and I'm also part of the uh, Healthcare Test for the Suda uh, um, Research Committee. I'm also a nurse practitioner. It's my pleasure. I know that you've seen the faces of the other two, but you really don't know who they are. Would you like to know who they are? All right, next. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Dr. Norman White. Um, I am a therapist. I wear many hats. As you can see, I'm here um, on this panel. Um, I'm a vice chair of the JET. It's Jobs, Economics, and Tourism for the Honorable Daphne Campbell. Um, I'm a member of the AACC, which is the American Association of Christian Commerce. Um, and I sit on many different boards. Uh, you could go on and on and on. But it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. White. Next, Mercedes Alvarez. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. I am Mercedes Alvarez. I am director of an international nonprofit organization in charge of educating people about their human rights. The name is Youth for Human Rights and Human Right United for Human Rights. Thank you. Now I just told you that our dear honorable Senator Daphne Campbell has put this wonderful team together with varied skill sets. Do you all agree that she's very passionate about health care? Look what she's doing in the healthcare community. She has put us all together, and she has put our team to work. And later, you will hear about all the wonderful work that we are all doing as a team in the community. Now, as a testament, just to show uh, what Senator Daphne Campbell is doing, and just to show that you really feel that way, please 
take that flyer in front of you, the one that says, Senator Daphne Campbell cares. I want everybody to stand up with it. If you do not have one, we have some at the front. I want everyone to stand up, hold it up. I have, I have mine, so you're gonna hold it up just like this. Now we're gonna have the cameraman in front so that he can see. One, two, three. Senator Daphne Campbell cares. Senator Daphne Campbell cares. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, we're gonna go again one more time. On the count of three. One, two, three. Durant, Titus, please welcome her to the stage. Michaela Titus is the founder, CEO, and executive director of the Community Health and Empowerment Network. The Community Health and Empowerment Network, Inc., CHE Network, is a nonprofit organization established in 2015 with the aim of providing charitable empowerment and health education services to the underserved and low-income population to address health disparities in South Florida. CHE Network offers educational courses to help the underserved populations develop healthier habits and lifestyles. They seek to collaborate with individuals, corporations, and organizations to continue educational programs. CHEN provides assistance to support other small community-based organizations in the network to help them maintain their services in the community through technical assistance and capacity building. So give a warm welcome to Ms. Titus. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I would like to say good evening to our distinguished guest, Senator Campbell. Um, as Jennifer mentioned, who is doing a wonderful job in our community. Uh, it is an honor and a pleasure to work with her and to serve our great District 38. Uh, tonight, what I'm going to talk about is in regards to the services that we provide. Um, I am the Executive Director of the Community Health and Empowerment Network. I'm also the CEO and founder of this organization. After working with the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County uh, for about 10 years as a STD health manager, as well as the Minority AIDS Coordinator, um, I basically took a leap, leap of faith uh, to be able to go out into the community and to establish an organization an organization that can help to deal with some of the health disparities that we have going on today. Have you heard of someone that has HIV AIDS? Now, if some of you do not know what HIV is, it's a human immunodeficiency virus. It's a preventable disease. It's 100% preventable. And it is transmitted through sexual contact, mother to mother, and also through intra IV drug using. So a lot of you may say, okay, I don't do any as far as drugs and I don't have a lot of partners, right? But it only takes that one time. And many contacts come across in monogamous relationships, right? And so basically our goal is to be able to provide education to empower individuals to take control of their sexual health, to use methods such as condoms, right? To be able to protect yourself. Because if there's a disease that's 100% preventable, why is Miami-Dade County right now number one in the nation for new HIV cases? So there's some work still needs to be done. 
there's a lot of education, and there's a lot of services that's needed to be able to empower individuals to know that they can take the charge to protect themselves. So I hope I didn't scare you guys too much tonight, uh, but it is the truth, it is what's going on in our community, and in order for us to uh, help reduce get to zero, which is a goal, zero new infections, zero cases of death-related HIV cases, and zero stigma and discrimination. So I thank you tonight for your time, and uh, please reach out to me if you're interested in collaborating for any services or wanting to get tested for any of the diseases that I mentioned. Thank you very much. Lydia Teller began her career as a registered pharmacist with Walgreens in 2004. She, be she became a consultant pharmacist in 2014, five years after co-founding Rise and Shine Pharmacists. A devout Christian mother and outstanding homemaker, Mrs. Teller is passionate about people's wellness and well-being. She was named by the city of Miami Gardens as a woman of distinction in 2012. Good evening. Um, according to a research done by Harvard School of uh, Medical School, in America, is the most expensive, more expensive than anywhere on the planet Earth. So if we spend this much, on healthcare, how then, how can we be in health crisis? One we expect that having spent so much, we should have the best healthcare in the whole world. But it is not so. And uh, why is this not so? Because a high percentage of people still don't have access to full healthcare. Uh, Sometimes people are covered by insurance, but because they have to pay so much when they go to see the doctor, they have high deductible, they have high copay when they go to the pharmacy to pick their uh, medications. All these factors make it difficult for them to have full and complete access to their health. And we know as human beings, our health is the most valuable asset that we can have. If you don't have your help, nothing else matters. If you have your help, you have every other thing. So tonight, I'm going to be speaking from the point, I'm, I'm going to be talking about two points, as a pharmacist and also a, 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 a owner of an independent pharmacy. I, I would say from my work experience and interaction with people, I identified two major problems that we have that has contributed and is still contributing to the healthcare care crisis that we have right now. And the first one is the insurance company. And the second one is the cost of medication. Thank you so much for your pharmaceutical perspectives of healthcare. She is right. Do you all agree that we do have a healthcare crisis in this country? Yeah. How many people agree? Please put your hands up. Good evening. You all looking so wonderful. We appreciate your presence here and Senator Daphne Campbell surely does appreciate your presence here. Um, the, uh, we did a, a few research about the community uh, health perspective. We decided to present this to you because um, we need for you to know why the Senator is passionate about your health and we thank you for giving us the opportunity to talk to you and to uh, show, share with you our, our research and I'm going to let my um, uh, Vice Chair also talked to you about the different things that she has also uh, found from the research that we uh, conducted. 
Marjorie. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir. Buenas tardes. <laughs> Good. On behalf of um, our Honorable Senator Daphne Campbell, I want to say a warm welcome to all of you for being here tonight. I'm sure you have, um, there's a lot that you can learn. Moi vraiment content pour moi nous tous qui venez à soi à la, et me souhaiter que nous qu'à apprendre quelque chose dans cette présentation ça que nous allons faire. Ma parle de anglais à créole parce que my Spanish is not that good, so un poquito Spanish. <laughs> Okay. Now, we want to talk a little bit about Medicaid expen expansion. As you know, now, under the leadership of our new president, I'm not sure we're going to have a Medicaid expansion. Now, Medicaid expansion is not likely to, to get through, and that is the honest truth. We have a governor, and we have the, the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives that are more Republicans. So therefore, the likelihood of them actually come together and cut um, and actually expand Medicaid so that more of you can have Medicaid is actually very, very slim to none. So therefore, this is going to affect the district. It's going to affect you from getting access to care. So therefore, I need you guys to actually be more involved. Be involved in the community, let your voice be heard, raise awareness, and try to stand up for what is right, which is the right to have healthcare access. Thank you so much. Bonsoir, that's, that's the only word I know in Creole. <laughs> um, buenas tardes, that, I know a lot of words in Spanish. Um, well, let me tell you something. Senator Campbell have a brilliant idea of creating a task force to know what is going on in the community. You know, what are the needs that the community have in terms of health? So everybody knows that you know, we are afraid of being sick because then we need to pay and it costs a lot of money. Most of you don't have insurance. Most of you uh, have not visited a doctor. I heard one person who, the last time he visited a doctor was when he was born. That, that happened, right? I mean, you, you haven't been uh, being a doctor or visited a doctor for years. So when you get sick, you don't know what to do, you will go to the emergency of a hospital, and, and that is creating a lot of problems for you. So everybody has fears of being sick. So Senator Campbell created this task force to know what happened in the community. And here, you know, we are collecting a lot of information. We are getting data, right? we are doing research, all that boring stuff, right? But we are mostly listening. Please give these brilliant and highly educated members of the Health Task Force a huge applause. Next, Mr. George Bassou will come and talk a little about mental health. Very important topic. I am not Mr. Bassou. <laughs> Mr. Bassou is graduated with a Master's of Science in Psychology from Barry University. He underwent a three-year postgraduate training in the field of infant mental health from the Institute for Child and Family Health, Incorporated, formerly known as Children's Psychiatric Center. He has been working as a psychotherapist, as a clinician for over 10 years. He is currently pursuing a doctorate degree in public health from Walden University. Welcome, Mr. Bosu. Good evening. Uh, 
it's a pleasure for me to be here and I want to thank Senator Campbell for putting such a wonderful task force together and I'm very proud to be part of it. Uh, today, we would like to address two specific issues related to mental health care. We'll talk about one, mental health, mental illness bias, and two, access to mental health care. Let's start with the first one. Although mental illness bias could be found across the board, however, it was recently reported that even mental health professionals might not be immune from hidden biases regarding mental illnesses. For instance, Morat reported that accuracy of diagnosis was affected by the social identity of both. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, one in five American adults have experienced a mental, illness, a mental health issue, and one in 25 Americans live with a serious mental illness, such as schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and major depression. In terms of access to mental health care, the Haitian American community is in great disadvantage in comparison to other communities. Not only the number of Haitian-led mental health agency is low, but also there is a major lack of funding allotted to mental health care in this community. Ladies and gentlemen, please give Mr. George Bissou a hand. Miss Anna Peer, where are you? She likes to tell everybody that she's a nurse and that she's very passionate, very educated, strong businesswoman. Please come to the stage. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir. 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 Je voulais prendre l'opportunité pour me remercier le sénateur nous, Daphne Campbell, pour le programme que nous mettons sous pied pour nous. Pour nous qui a pour la communauté en pile, qui a pour la santé nous. No, that 
Zagatela. Please stand up, say it again, because I just want to learn it tonight. Come on. We all want to learn how you say good evening in Nigeria. You guys are ready? Yeah. Yes. Spanish, when I'm Jamaican, when I'm Haitian, when I'm tout. In fact, so passé on bill, ça gagne deux mois. Côté que Konya, dans State Floride là, son loyer, 1er janvier, qui premier qui indépendance des pour nous, le National Holiday. National Holiday. So, I'm not going to be able to do the work, or the work. We're not going to be able to do the work, or the work. We're not going to be able to do the work. Thank you. 